Pomona Island, a place that's full of history, both industrial and Victorian history, but also journey's end for one of Manchester's lost waterways. Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. I'm here on Pomona Island. We've done a video about this place before, fascinating place. Behind me is the River Irwell, Manchester Ship Canal. Well, there's a significance to me being here where I am at this very point because behind me is it's a right desolate like wasteland behind me. We've had to come through all the, 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 the weeds and everything. But like I say, significance to being here. And that's because just down here is a little grill. Now, what is that grill? Well, very much influenced by Jeff Ashworth's book, The Lost Rivers of Manchester. We've done quite a few now, haven't we? We've done the Medlock. We've looked at the Irk, we've looked at the Irwell, we've looked at the River Tib, and we've even looked at Shooter's Brook. But there is one last river that's completely, we've never talked about before, and we've never mentioned, and it's the Corn Brook, one of Manchester's lost rivers, because for the bulk of its journey around South Manchester, uh, just, just around the south of the city centre, it's in a culvert. There's plenty of hints at its existence, So this journey following the River Cornbrook is very much inspired by Geoffrey Ashworth's 1980s book The Lost Rivers of Manchester and by my two friends Nick and Roy. Let's see what Jeff says about the, the Cornbrook. The Cornbrook rises in Gorton and follows a tortuous path through Manchester's southern inner city suburbs and empties itself into the Manchester Ship Canal at the Pomona Docks. Although not culverted entirely like our last two streams, we've talked about another two rivers before this, the infrequent points where the Brook sees the sky are between high walls and is unknown to all but the most discerning observer. So there you go, a river whose most of its journey is in, in culverts. So let's take a look at this um, this route that the Cornbrook takes. Here is a map of the, just showing the southern part of Manchester city centre. And what I've done is I've actually tried to draw the Cornbrook on it. There you go. So although not 100% accurate, that pretty much, even though I say so myself, I'm quite pleased with that. That pretty much shows the route of the River Cornbrook around the south side of Manchester city centre. You'll see it starts over in East Manchester, fed by springs around the Ashton Old Road area. It heads in a westerly direction takes a dip down near Hume and then it finds its way towards the River Irwell and we'll be following it from the left hand side of the map and we'll be following it upstream from the River Irwell where it outfalls um, and we'll be following it to its almost to its source a lot of the time the sources of these little rivers are very difficult to find they originate underground from little springs and other little tiny water courses but there you go that's that's the journey um, so let's crack on with the video and the grills below down here are where it empties into the ship canal. So I want to take you into that culvert and we're going to follow its journey. But we're going to start here at the outfall and we're going to go upstream. Now the reason for that is because here on Pomona Island, probably in the future, there's going to be quite a bit of development. As you can see, it's ripe for development. There's always some, already some flats over there. So we don't know if in the future we can get into that culvert. So we're going to do it in reverse and go upstream. You know, it's a fascinating river. I say river, there's parts of it that are completely dry, so I'm told, because I've not been there yet. But it's fascinating because the culverting 
th throughout the year uh, around the city it's been done over many many different areas so it goes from concrete to stone to brick Right, we're in down some godforsaken manhole in the middle of uh, somewhere. But we're at the end of the, sort of towards the end of uh, the Cornbrook here now, as I've explained. We're going to head on now to its, where it actually meets with the, uh, the ship canal. So it's down a concrete box. So I'll send you first and you can see where we're going. So this concrete box we're in now, quite slippy, we're actually underneath Pomona Island. I don't know if some of you have watched my videos, I did one on Pomona Island. Um, it used to be an old docks, it's got a lot of history attached to it. Well this was done when? In the 80s? 80s. This, was, this concrete box section was put in in the 80s. Um, and it looks like the water started to get deeper as we head towards the outflow into the uh, Irwell Ship Canal. Okay, so I just want to take a moment to introduce you to the team. Um, there's a picture there of me and James, and to our right, respectively, are Roy and Nick. Uh, they will be accompanying us on the journey on the Cornbrook. They're our guides, if you like, and you'll see them in the video. Now, <clears throat> I want to give them a big thank you because... Uh, Roy and Nick have both done this journey in its entirety. They know the Cornbrook, they've done the whole tortuous route and they know the pitfalls and the ins and outs, if you like. So it's great to have a guide and great to have someone who, who, who knows what they're doing. So you'll see uh, Roy and Nick in the video and I want to thank them because they've put a lot of time into obviously coming out with us and, and taking us uh, along the route. So big thanks to Roy and Nick and without them we wouldn't be able to make this video, I don't think. Now, as we round the corner here in the culvert and we start getting towards the outfall at the Manchester Ship Canal or River Irwell, the water's getting deeper and it's about, um, shall we say, waist deep. And it's, or it's certainly, if it isn't now, it certainly gets to about waist deep. Now, cut to this. I have a bit of a recurring, not nightmare, but a bit of a recurring bad dream. And it's to do with um, big fish in dark water. <laughs> and as we going along here, you just kept feeling little taps against your legs, little bumps against your leg, uh, mainly my thighs. And you're thinking, what was that? Am I walking into something here? What was that? Bump, bump against your leg, tap, bump. And you're like, what is that? And I think <laughs> just beneath the water, we've got some quite big fish just checking us out and bumping into us and seeing who the hell are you in our culvert? Um, so I, I, I couldn't put my hands under the water. I know you probably think I'm a softie, but it's just like these monsters of the deep uh, where we were. Uh, I don't know what they were, what, what kind of fish they were, but I can imagine that they were quite big. They jump at you. Well, I don't know, they started spiders at the minute. I'm feeling things under the water hitting me. I'm yeah. such a wuss. Right, well, you get these. Right. Yeah. right. Did you get my arm to Mark? Man, all where? Eh? Shipping out. Well, it does drop off at some point. Is it? Well, I'm edging forward. If I go. So we're just edging forward here because at some point here now, into the outflow of the ship canal, there's a bit of a drop off. 
which we don't want to go down so we're just edging forward very very slowly and yes i should have brought steak and no i didn't bring a steak <laughs> i am the expert wader uh, right so right at the outflow now It's as deep as it gets. Where's James? How deep are you, James? Whoa. Yeah, well, it doesn't get much worse. You could probably come up. That's out. Doesn't get any deeper. Just come up here. Oh, shit, you look at the top. What's that noise? It's geese. Birds, seagulls, geese, dogs, dogs. It's got wildlife. Let's go. Uh, that's not daylight behind there that's James with the torch because his waders aren't as uh, his waders are only up to his uh, thighs so he had to stay back there because it got too deep for him so this is it this is where the Cornbrook outflows into the River Irwell Manchester Ship Canal so the journey is going to be that way towards Gorton is that right boys? Yeah. So we've done this bit first at the outfall because there's going to be a lot of development. I'll just bring you nearer. There's possibly going to be a lot of development in the Pomona Island area. So access to this bit of the Cornbrook might not be actually uh, possible in the future. Anyway, let's crack on and go around Manchester and towards Gorton. Look, it's shifted. Yeah. See it there? Uh, obviously surveyed it. Look, it's moved. It's ready to collapse. It's sinking that way, isn't it? Something happened to come down there. The end's disappearing. Eventually, this will collapse after we do it. Where are we in Manchester this week on our journey on the uh, the River Cornbrook? Well, there you go. There's Manchester on Google Earth. And what I'm going to do, we're over in this sort of southwestern corner of Manchester city centre. I'm going to zoom in here for you. And as we zoom in, we'll come down here. And you can see we're at just at Pomona Island here. <clears throat> this is Pomona Island. It used to be a former docks. And before that, it was a... Uh, the Victorians had some gardens there and they used to like to go down there and take tea. And I don't blame them because it was probably quite a nice area by the, the River Irwell, which later became the Manchester Ship Canal. A lot of the berths here on the former dock land have been filled in. You'll note the Bridgewater Canal there. And it's the fact that the Bridgewater Canal is here and the Manchester Ship Canal is here that makes this strip of land an island. They call it Pomona Island. A couple of things I want you to clock. I want you to clock the bridge over the um, Bridgewater Canal and I want you to clock the railway there. All right. So our journey, part one, we opened the video here. Um, just here where the, the Cornbrook outfalls into the Manchester Ship Canal. Um, and the culvert we're in is a concrete box and this is the route it takes roughly so there's a swing on it so it goes from here and it swings round there and it goes this direction and it comes to about here to the canal so um, there you go just remember that bit there so we've, we've done that journey all right and that's the concrete box we're in around about here it begins to get very very old as it approaches the canal um, and there's um, a sump, a siphon that James Brindley built to take it under the canal. And here, in this little clump of trees here, is um, the Cornbrook Weir. I'm going to zoom in a bit more for you. That is the Cornbrook Weir, just there. And it goes in a U-bend, like in your sink, under the canal. And like I say, runs that way to the ship canal. All right, and then the Cornbrook does something like this. It goes up here under the railway and gets to, let me just have a look, gets to this area here. So this journey, roughly, where you follow the cursor, is part one. All right, that's part one. And then it carries on its journey around South Manchester. So we're in this culvert here, in this concrete, modern 1980s concrete box. And then at some point round here, as, as we approach the canal, it's going to get very old. I'm going to show you Cornbrook Weir, built by Brindley. And then we're going to try and attempt this bit here, which is really, really difficult. So that's our journey, all right, across, across 
Pomona Island. Now, like I say, Pomona Island has got a whole history on it. I did a video on it about its history from being the um, the strawberry gardens, the uh, the Cornbrook strawberry gardens to the Pomona gardens, and then it was a, a, a Victorian entertainment complex. There is a video that I did if you want to know the history about that. But there's no reference here, you'll notice, at all to the River Cornbrook. It's buried, it's gone, it's lost. You know, the people that ride on the trams and drive down this road here are probably not aware of its existence. And so to see the Cornbrook as it was, we need to go back to a very, very old map. Now, normally I would use the side-by-side -side National Libraries of Scotland maps, and they date back to about 1888, but they're not early enough for us. So I'm going to go to a map that is um, 1857. Here we go. There's the 1857 map of Manchester. And finally, the Cornbrook is here. There it is, see? Now there's the bridge over the uh, Bridgewater Canal I wanted you to clock. And there's the railway that I wanted you to clock. And there you go. Pomona Island at this point is called Pomona Gardens. And the Victorians are busy going there to the tea gardens and strolling around and having a lovely time. The wind, by the way, is blowing this way. So Pomona got a nice deal, uh, all, the, all the pollution from Manchester blew that way. So there was fresh wind coming in here from Cheshire. Or so it goes. But there's the Cornbrook coming in there from South Manchester. You see it there. And you can see it's how it stutters there because bits of it are culverted already. Culverted there. It runs across there. All the modern roads are in. There's Cornbrook Weir that James Brindley built. Goes in the sump underneath the Bridgewater Canal and runs across what we what became the Docklands, Pomona Docks, and then out the outfall into the Irwell. And it's running open at this point. Now, even this bit was eventually culverted, um, and I presume that the original culvert was just a, a, an old brick thing, but that was redone in the 80s. So there you go, there's the 1857 map that shows our River Cornbrook, and that's how far we have to go back to see it running open. Right, let's crack on with the journey. Okay, so we're going to leave the Cornbrook underneath Pomona Island now and we're going to move on towards the Bridgewater Canal um, and the culverts get older and the challenge gets more difficult. The Bridgewater Canal is just coming into view now and it's snaking its way between the road that you see on the island and the railway line. You can just about see it now. Now the Bridgewater Canal goes back to 1761. Um, and the next section that we're going to go into, the next culverted section of the River Cornbrook, is very, very old. Now, it doesn't date back to that time because we knew it ran open right up, a, up to the canal, uh, up to the, the siphon. But this next bit certainly goes back, I would say, early 1800s. But it's very difficult to date this next section. But, uh, it, it, like I say, it's old. Certainly the Cornbrook Weir that I'm going to show you dates back to around the 1760s. But let's crack on with the journey. Okay, so we've just come from the uh, Irwell, Manchester Ship Canal. This concrete box, uh, 1980s. At this point here now, I'm going to turn around. And unfortunately, we've got to go onwards down there. Okay, so we're now on this section here on the approach to the Bridgewater Canal. If you remember from the, the other map, the 1857 map, this section was still not culverted. This ran open, so we know that this culverted section to the Bridgewater Canal is post 1857. Doesn't look very inviting to be honest with you. How, how far down there are we going? Right, to an arch. Right. right, so I might have to strip, I might have to put the GoPro on my head um, and you might get head cam footage. But yeah, we're going that way, looks rather thrilling. Uh, down a bit, James, it's a bit over, that's it. Uh, nice bit of an arch there. Yeah, Great work. Yeah, that light down there now. That's it. See that arch? Oh yeah, the arch. Wow. Wow. Uh, right, I'm just going to get a picture of that. Is it? It's out there home, James. <laughs> <laughs> Shit in. Watch it. 
check on these goods. Move it a little bit up. You don't have to crawl eyes. If you crouch down, you can duck under the fingers and then it goes a bit higher so the next you can get a bit of a one and not bang your head. Yeah. It's not no, actually. I just, I, I, you're coming towards me. That's yeah. All. It's not actually as bad, is it? No. We're not going all the way up to it. I just stopped to get and watch it here. It's more weird. Just put your hand on the um, the rocky stuff. It's fairly clean. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. A bit of old uh, wood there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Keep going, I'm still recording. Call you sharp, isn't it? <laughs> We're not going to get much further before you get So to we're under the uh, well, Bridgewater Canal, canal there. Where the arch is, just beyond it's the canal. Is it? But the basin is just beyond it. <laughs> Nice bit of a pipe there, you can hold on to. I'd say we're as far as you can get the camera back. As far as we go. Yeah? Well, today, we'll do the rest of it after we come out. What's that? God. No, it's too torch. Let's see the whole light. Maybe chair there. Yeah. Have you talked to him for a second? I just want to check something. Ah. Yeah. And what can we get? Over this side to get better. Welcome to dreaming with geriatrics. <laughs> <laughs> It's all falling apart. Oh, right, this is as far as we go. It's, it's a, so beyond this low arch is yeah. round the corner. Just there is where the that Brindley's Basin is. The weir that right. takes the water course under the right. So feet of engine. 1970-65. It was done. It, well, the arch marks where the Bridgewater Canal is. But I'll point the camera forward. And you can see where we are. This place is. Uh, shall we just say it's not one of the most uh, fashionable parts of Manchester. Oh, Tenny, your heart's out. That would have drained now, wouldn't it? That would have... Would it? Yeah, well, it's good to say it's not a pear shell, it's a water split. And then, back in the alleviation basin as well as a siphon. So we're just by the Bridgewater Canal, one of the rare parts where the uh, Cornbrook runs open. We've had to do a bit of a... Uh, it was a bit clogged up. We've had to do a bit of freeing of uh, one of the uh, one of the grills where it goes into Brindley's weir. But uh, we're just waiting for this to clear. And apparently, down there, there's an entrance. <laughs> we'll just change the battery now. Probably not a bad place for the battery to go out. Change it here. Yeah, because mine won't go. It's got to... <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sake. You normally just yeah, get that, in that. That's at the side. Well, it's going to be right there. Well, I can't reach out any more to quite quick sand, isn't it? Yeah, we, but there was always muddy when we got I know, but I was sat on that side last time. I remember, I remember sat there with my feet and they weren't.
like getting wet it was just mud we're avoiding the black lagoon at the moment because uh, <laughs> there's a creature in it so we're going to have a brew just by the bridgewater canal pick it out if he's got a picker and we'll use shovels and stuff Right, so you saw us crawling along that bit there in the Cornbrook and we came to an arch. That arch is there just on the other side of the canal, right? Remember we're going upstream. Now the Cornbrook goes in a sump, like your U-bend on your in your sink, goes in a sump under the canal. Who, who came up with that idea? Our friend James Brindley. So let's take a look at Brindley's weir. Right, a bit nasty at the moment, full of rubbish and litter, which is a great shame. But this is what Brindley came up with to get the Cornbrook under the Bridgewater Canal. So you'll see that we can't traverse this bit because we're it's all underwater. Um, so it comes in there and then it comes round here. You want to follow me? Like I say, it comes in there and the Cornbrook flows here. Down a little culvert here. Alright, but here's the best bit. I need to just go through these these woods here. If you follow me. Mm. Now down here, and I'm gonna give you a shot in a minute, the Cornbrook comes out through this black lagoon, runs down that culvert into Brindley's Weir under the uh, under the canal. So it's actually flowing there. You can't see much, but it's actually flowing there, the Cornbrook. Now I've just thought, where the sump goes under the canal, we kind of stopped at the arch, didn't we? And I didn't show you exactly where the sump comes out. So I think we're gonna have to go back and I'm gonna have to show you where Brindley's weir, or where the sump comes out. Uh, so let's go and show you that bit and I'll show you the Black Lagoon. Well, just before we do that, let me just show you Cornbrook weir. There you go. A little circular basin with a fence around it um, and it dates to 1763 that now I know it's filthy absolutely filthy full of rubbish that obviously that's flowed through the corn brook and it doesn't look very good it needs tidying up and cleaning no point ranting on this channel it's the canal and river trust if you want to see this thing cleaned up uh, I'll just show it you in full flow after we'd re release some of that stuff that horrible water from horrible mud from the Black Lagoon, there it is flowing in full flow. Um, so it can get, I imagine when it's been raining, it can get quite wild. I looked up some information, and here's the information that I found. It's not a great deal, but this is uh, this is the most interesting thing I could find. Um, so it, this you can pause this 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 sort of like document, but what it's mainly saying is that um, this was from a study in 1997. Um, Brindley was overseeing the works at Cornbrook towards the end of 1763 and he was short of men for the works there. Um, while we're on the subject of 1763, this document here, if you pause this one, this is quite interesting because it was it's, what it says is that 1763, the Bridgewater Canal terminated at Cornbrook, which I never knew. But then later, a year later, um, 1764, it, it ran on just a short distance into, into the Castlefield Basin in Manchester. I didn't know it, it terminated at Cornbrook. And there's another one here. Again, you can pause this document if you want, but this one says, let's have a look at the interesting bits. The basin is enclosed by walls of regular coast and massive squared sandstone. It's li lined with large sandstone sets. Um, it has a deep channel around its perimeter to the north, east and south. Um, the, it's a drain sump about five metres in diameter, as you can see from what I've shown you. Uh, the brook enters the basin at its northeast corner and flows into the drain via a deep channel well below the level of the sets. Um, blah, 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 blah. 
in times of in times of spate, the basin could accommodate large volumes of water, and by means of the sturdy basin floor and enclosure walls, prevent the scouring of the canal embankment. Right, so it looks like it was built to handle a fair bit of flood water. Um, the brook was carried in a culvert well below the canal and returned to its natural channel well beyond the canal to the west. Um, right, so this is... Uh, when we went in earlier, we went into the... Uh, this is the picture, by the way, of the construction of the siphon. This is what, another one that I found. But let me just say to you, so when we went earlier on the other side of the canal and we got to the arch, Roy sort of said, well, this is as far as we go. We don't need to go any further. So I left and then I had this bur this question in my head burning away going, well, hang on, where Cornbrook Way sumps underneath the canal, what's it like where it immediately comes out? So I said to Roy, we're going to have to go back because I want to see exactly where it comes out. So that's where I'm going to take you in a moment. I'm going to go back in, back into that tunnel on the other side of the canal um, and we're going to have to go and look where this, this uh, Cornbrook Way comes out, even if there's nothing to look at. We're going to have to go, go and check it out. Right, so back in. We're back in, they had to come back in because they just realised I didn't go beyond the arch and show you where the sump comes out. So I'm going to crawl down there. I'm going to show you it comes to an end, but I'm going to show you where the sump actually comes out. Not a massive amount to see, but obviously if you want to see it. So let's go. That's, that's the route behind. I'll show you the route behind now. I don't know what I'm laying here, but it's not nice. Um, Head heels. Dead eels, yeah. That's where we come from. So wow. that's the space that we're crawling in. As you can see, there's not much to it. Uh, and then forward, uh, as you can see, the space is about two foot. Now, it's quite dry here, what I'm crawling on. However, it's a crust, and the cornbrook is running to the side and underneath me, so I'm just hoping this crust doesn't go through. Um, absolutely filthy. I'm told that there's more shitholes along the way in this place, but uh, you know, there you go, it is what it is. Right, hopefully, I can turn the camera around and I can show you what's in front. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? So, there you go, uh, somewhere underneath that arch ahead, the water comes in, and you can see it's just a dead end. Um, I'm laying on my stomach here filming this. Oh, he's getting some pics there, but uh, quite a filthy, dirty, horrible place. Well, that's the best I can show you, other than going in that water and showing you underneath it, which I'm not going to do. Um, we'll go to the end there. <clears throat> so that is bloody old, and it. What do we reckon? At least early 1800s if not late 1700s. Okay, so we're back at the Black Lagoon. Now, Roy, being the determined character that he is, wants to get in there. Believe it or not, behind that ivy is an entrance that the Cornbrook runs through there, and there's an entrance to a tunnel. Um, extremely dangerous, but Roy's quite a determined character and he's been here before now. It's worse than when he came here a few years ago. The mud has got worse and he decides he's going in. Now, it was going to be initially a recce, but as you're going to see, he gets, he gets the whole footage for us, which is brilliant. I openly admit I would struggle with this. I hate mud like this. I'm really struggling. So I'm the man on the outside, uh, me and my mate John are the men on the outside um, and Roy's going to go in, he's got a gas detector and he's going to enter that uh, entrance there into the Cornbrook. So we have to sit, wait and be ready to go in if need be. Uh, but as you'll see it's quite black and disgusting but he, he manages to do it. Um, so where are we? Well we're about to enter one of the most hellish sections of the Cornbrook. The yeah, curses at the uh, Brinley's Weir, and we go along here at the side of the railway, and then underneath the railway, and we come out over near the road that is called the Bridgewater Way. Absolute hellhole. So this one's for all you saf safety conscious people out there who will now be shouting at the uh, screen. Roy's going to open the uh, ivy curtains, and there's the entrance to the tunnel. 
you wouldn't think that was there, would you? I know some of you will know where this is. I strongly recommend you don't go in there. Roy is actually in there, so it's over to Roy. The roof is sloping because this very old culvert has slipped downwards. Again, disclaimer, if you know where this is, don't go in because this is full of gas and mud. There's a risk of being trapped. Um, I'm going to tell you now Roy gets out, um, so there you go. But this is an unsafe, dangerous place. You should not go in here whatsoever. Safety check, okay. All good. So rats. All good.
So as I said, the mud is now thigh deep, incredibly dangerous. There's a rat just going across there in the distance. Um, we're now going to enter into a concrete section, a modern section again, but that mud is treacherous. Where the white arrow is pointing is another manhole with a ladder going down to it. Not the ladder you can see in the, immediately in front of you, it's up in the distance. We're going to enter there in a bit and I will have my moment in the mud. But as this is now absolutely treacherous and thigh deep mud, Roy turns round and starts heading back. Looks tame, doesn't it? But it's so, so dangerous. So finally, um, we can go no further and Roy turns round now and goes back uh, underneath the railway and in this big section and then we, he makes a safe return. I've got to thank him for this because it was hellish to do. Well, it's a bit stupid. Nasty. Fuck. Filthy. You have to edit that bit. Roy, did you get the tram back? You alright? Well done. Thanks for that. <laughs> I can smell it. You brought the gases out with you on this lift. Ah. 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 Okay, so here is the route above ground. So we're going underneath the yard here. What I'm going to do in a second, I'm going to show you something. Um, so we're going underneath the railway here, which is actually the tram. And just beyond the other side of that wall that's all blue is a little arch, similar to the arch over here. I'm just going to show you this arch here. You see that arch there in the wall? Right, so there's another one of those on this side of the railway bridge and then at that point there it opens out into the big bit the big open section underneath the daisies here on the wall underneath this railway arch is this section here that you saw that's that section there so above is those daisies painted on the wall this is Cornbrook Road by the way and as we approach just underneath the bridge this is also Cornbrook Road almost exactly the same spot Poor old Rover's probably been pushing up daisies for the past 60 years. So as we head out here towards where Rover was stood all those years ago, we're heading towards the end of Roy's underground journey where it got thigh deep, I'll just remind you. So there you go, that's, that's where we are now, that's what's below here now and look forward and it goes concrete again and way in the distance is another manhole that I am about to drop into with great reluctance. And that uh, concrete bit I've just shown you goes underneath the Bridgewater Way there, a modern dual carriageway. And that Bridgewater Way also cuts through where Rover was stood. Anyway, let's crack on. So next time you're driving to Man United or you're going to the Trafford Centre from Manchester City Centre, you're going over the Cornbrook and you're going over based similar, sort of what you've just been looking at. However, the bit under Bridgewater Way is very treacherous. So I'm going to drop in now and show you this concrete section um, to the arch that Roy's just took you to so you've sort of seen it all all right so let's crack on now drop in at another point I'm going to show you a concrete bit on the bridge waterway mm -hmm. 
Behind me is a shit stinking festering quagmire of black filthy mud. Now don't worry we've got the gas meter and um, we're only at the bottom of a manhole here as you can see. So it's a quick dash up the manhole so we're not venturing in there. Well, this is what you're up against, um, absolutely horrendous. And we have to avoid this bit. This is the bit we have to avoid. As I'm studying now, I'm sinking, but it's okay because I've got all of the ladder, so I ain't going anywhere. But I'll just show you on the phone. I want my phone out in a minute. Uh, up ahead, absolutely horrendous. Probably the worst thing I've ever done now. You know me, you know I hate that feeling of sinking into mud. Uh, and this is not a good place. So we're having to avoid this bit just for safety, really. It would be nice to do the whole lot, but we're having to avoid it. But I'll just spin the camera around. How far does this go this? It's not far just to there, that's what I'm saying, it's a short distance. It's a bit to where? Just that arch, you can't really see from it, it's just there. Follow okay, well, me, you can walk on it, you have to stand there. Here? Yeah, yeah there you go. Can you stand there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not deep. Trust me, baby steps. It's easy, you can always stand on it. Right, get to there now then. You can stand here. Right, you can see how this is going, can't you? Uh, we're trying to get to the arch where Roy did his other treacherous journey. He wants me to get to the arch and just see that, that bit. Not going well. As I'm moving along, I'm sinking in. Um, I am not happy. So you can hear me starting to sound like an idiot abroad. Uh, Carl Pilkington, I'm not happy about this at all. In the end, I just turned back. And it was a wise decision because... I think Roy went a little bit further on and he was stink sinking as well. So, yeah, very silly. Well, it wasn't silly really because I didn't go far and I knew it wasn't right. Um, so we just turned back. So, yes, <laughs> I didn't venture any further. Um, but we do have to revisit this in part two and go the other way. But apparently going the other way from that manhole isn't as bad. Hmm. We'll see, shall we? We might have to go through the to be honest. Because I'm going, I'm, as I stand, I'm going in. Yeah, look, that's why you have to keep moving. Yeah. That is the filthy. And it's only to the arch. That's the annoying thing. But I just do not want to get stuck in that. It's horrendous. And uh, of course, it's harboring gases as well. So, uh, so I think it's uh, back up the ladder to safety. Well, that's what you're up against when you do uh, the cornbrook. Bye, that was horrific. Go take me on the first date again. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your pint or two now after that. Yeah, that was, that was horrendous. Well, you want to get that on this crate? There you go, sneaky train there for the rail enthusiasts. Anyway, I forgot to record an outro as per usual, so pretend that while I'm sat there, I'm saying what I'm saying now, even though I'm not. Um, thanks for watching part one. Obviously, we're going to have to drop in and we're going to be doing other parts as we follow this tortuous river upstream to near where it sources, or at least through all the culverts around the south side of the city of Manchester. God knows what sort of hell holes we'll end up in or where we'll pop up in the, uh, in the city. But I hope you join us on the, the other parts because uh, if I'm going to go through all that hell, I want you to watch. <laughs> so anyway, 
There you go, part one, part two will be coming soon. I haven't filmed it yet, but stay tuned. Thanks for watching, take care, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.